Hi, welcome to the next in our series of Practical Electromagnetics for Engineers. A very short topic today on the energy stored in electric fields. If you're in my class, you can go ahead and follow along in the textbook at this site right here. Okay, well we know from our previous discussion that the energy um, is stored by charges in an electric field and we can calculate this energy by taking a charge and multiplying it by the voltage which is the scalar field at any point in space uh, created by an array of charges. We also know that the uh, charge is equal to the capacitance times the voltage and of course we can represent this as the voltage is equal just to the charge divided by the capacitance by dividing both sides by C. So let's take a look at a case where we take a little charge, let's call it delta Q, and then this delta Q is very tiny compared to the uh, charges we already have that are on two parallel plates of a capacitor. So if it makes you feel better we'll put a line here and a line here and say we've got a parallel plate capacitor. But we charge this thing up and we take a tiny bit of charge delta Q and we move it over here. Another way to think about it is that we're going to add a tiny bit of amount negative delta Q here and positive delta Q here. So how much does this change the energy by? Well the assumption is that this tiny bit of charge since it's small compared to the amount we've already got on the capacitor doesn't change V very much so the energy it takes to add this extra charge is delta Q times the voltage that's already there and we can take this expression right here and substitute Q over C in for voltage and come up with the energy it takes to add a tiny amount of charge to a capacitor that already has charge Q is given by delta Q, the size of the charge we add, times the amount of charge already on the capacitor divided by the capacitance. Now once we've got this expression, um, for how much it takes to add a little bit of charge, what we're going to do is we're going to take this expression, turn our delta triangle looking thing into a delta small letter to say we're doing calculus, and we're basically going to say let's find the energy by summing up a whole bunch of little tiny charges. So we'll start at, with the capacitor being empty, the charge is zero on each plate, and we're basically going to add delta Q's until we come up to some amount of charge capital Q, which is the total amount of charge we have on the plate. And so we're going to end up with positive, positive and negative Q on the two plates of this capacitor. Well, this is a really easy integral to do. Um, you can do this one in your head without opening the integral table book, and you come up with this expression here, one-half Q squared over C. But then again, we know there are relationships between capacitance and voltage, and we can plug that in for Q, and we find the energy stored in a parallel plate capacitor, or in fact any capacitor, since uh, this really doesn't depend on the specific geometry, it basically just depends on the value of the capacitance and the charge and the voltage, is one-half CV squared. So the energy stored in a capacitor is one-half CV squared. It turns out that that energy happens to be stored in the electric field. By creating that electric field, we've stored some energy in space. And so this region between the plates here that has these, these big red arrows that represent the electric field is where we're storing that energy. And we know the energy is 1 half CV squared. We know it's a pretty good approximation in a parallel plate capacitor that we can ignore those fringing fields that, that go like this. And it's all stored in this uniform electric field. We know C is equal to epsilon A over D. And we also know in a parallel plate capacitor where the fields are uniform that V, the value of V, is essentially the electric field times the distance between the plates. And if we plug those two things in, we can do a little bit of uh, getting rid of D from down here and, and not thinking of D squared. But we find the overall energy stored in the electric field in a parallel plate capacitor is one-half epsilon E squared times A times D, where this term is basically just the volume between the plates. So now, so now if we divide by the volume, we can find the energy per unit volume stored in any electric field, which happens to be one-half epsilon E squared, and this value is given in joules per meter cubed. And if we have a material of, of permittivity epsilon, uh, for a big epsilon, we're able to store more energy. For small epsilons like vacuum, we can store less energy. So this gives us a nice way to calculate just how much energy we can store in an electric field. And it turns out that we can't store very much. The electric field of, of one megavolt per meter, which is close to the breakdown threshold of air, the, the voltage, if you put a million volts across one meter, you're close to creating lightning bolts. That turns out to be about 4.4 .4 times 10 to the minus 6 joules per cubic centimeter. So that's actually a pretty small number.
if you compare it to something like an electrolytic capacitor, um, remember this is just one of these parallel plate capacitors we, we've sort of rolled up into a tight little jelly roll, then we can increase the value to about uh, 6 times 10 to the minus 2 joules per square centimeter. Um, something like a AA battery that is basically storing the electrical energy in terms of a chemical reaction is much higher. Now we're about 1,100 joules per cubic centimeter rather than millionths of a joules per cubic centimeter. If we go on and look at other types of chemical reactions like burning wood, we're up to 8,000 joules per cubic centimeter. Something like gasoline is 45,000 joules per cubic centimeter. Um, nuclear power sources like uranium are over 4 million joules per cubic centimeter. If we ever manage to master um, nuclear fusion, you're going to see that the deuterium-tritium reaction has something like 4 million joules per cubic centimeter energy storage density. So what does this mean? That we can store energy in an electric field, but the energy storage densities that we can achieve are very small, even for high electric fields compared to other ways of storing energy.